Chai with Manjula presents NRI, A Closer Look, a special series that focuses on some of the key issues that affect Indo-Americans and NRIs and takes a close look at solutions and prevention as well. Studies prove that Indo-Americans or South Asians in general are at a much higher risk of developing certain health problems. The additional risk factors are usually not detected by conventional screening or addressed by conventional treatments. So what are these factors and how do we manage them? Stay tuned for the answers. NRI, A Closer Look, presented by Chai with Manjula and sponsored by the Tech Museum of Innovation, San Jose, California. A unique hands-on technology and science museum for people of all ages and backgrounds, which inspires innovations for the benefit of humanity. And Development Alternatives Group, a non-profit organization in India that brings together traditional knowledge and modern science for sustainable development at the community, national and global level. Welcome to Jai with Manjula. The topic today is Indo-American health issues. My guest is Dr. Ramesh Japra, a well-known cardiologist and community leader in the Bay Area. Ramesh, it's great to have you here today. Absolutely, Manjula. Uh, I really want to commend you and congratulate you on this real show, and it's a pleasure to be on this show. Thank you very Jai much. Jai with Manjula. Ramesh, the Indo-American community is so concerned and confused about the warnings that we are getting about our high susceptibility towards some major health issues. Sure. So today I would like you to explain to us what those risks are and how we can manage them. But before that, first of all, tell us what major diseases are we talking about and how high are our risks? Well, absolutely, Manjula. You know, I think you said it uh, right to the point that unfortunately the South Asian uh, Americans here, especially the immigrants, the Indian American immigrants, we have come. And there's been a lot of studies which are showing that we are a lot more prone to coronary artery disease, mm -hmm. hypertension, diabetes, vitamin D deficiency, I see. and some others. Yeah, I knew about diabetes and uh, heart disease, but I didn't know about hypertension and you said vitamin D deficiency also. Absolutely. So uh, how high are our risks? The risks are almost three to four times more than the Caucasians for the South Asians. For all of these? Uh, especially for the coronary artery disease, the diabetes almost three times. Uh -huh. Vitamin D deficiency, I don't think we have enough studies to really say how much it is because okay. we are finding almost across the board, pe people have a lot of vitamin D deficiencies. And we'll go a little bit more that we have a little darker skin, so our melanin uh, does not allow the vitamin D to be formed. Okay. Uh, so okay, that's okay. why it become more deficient. Okay, and what are the factors involved with the other uh, diseases that you mentioned besides well, vitamin D? The other diseases, the coronary artery disease, uh, like I said, and uh, the risk factors, of course, pertain to everybody, every human being out there, mm -hmm. and the common risk factors, uh, which we already know about your diet, lack of exercise, the stress, the smoking, uh, diabetes, being obese, all these factors, of course, affect everybody and the genetic effect is the number one effect, where we are born and who we are born okay. with our parents. So which factor affects us here? The uh, factors which South Asians uh, do have a lot more, I mean some of them we know, the others we don't. Okay. I mean it's such a high risk, like I said, three to four times, I mean mm -hmm. it's mind boggling that yeah. we'll be more prone. Right. And not only more prone three to four times, but even earlier age, mm -hmm. so you normally the Caucasians will get it in their 50s and 60s, <laughs> and our Asian Americans are getting in their 30s and 40s. Okay, so higher incidence and at a younger age. At a younger age, a like okay. lot earlier. And on top of that, the mortality is a lot higher amongst us at a younger age. Mm -hmm. Like 50% people will die if they have a heart attack below before the age of 65, okay. as compared to almost 25% you know, among the Caucasians. Okay. And they'll be a little bit older and then die. And on top of that, our women, I mean, you know, we think our, our women are pure, they're mm -hmm. more, a lot more vegetarians, they right. lead a little purer, purer life out there, mm -hmm. but that's not true. They almost have as much risk, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, their mortality or their death rate once they have the heart disease is even higher. Okay. Cause so, uh, what is it? Genetic factor is one thing? Of course, uh, you know, as I said, uh, uh, genetically we are a lot more prone to it, which means there's a, something called metabolic syndrome which uh, means we have 
very high LDL, which is the bad cholesterol. Okay. We have low HDL, which is the good cholesterol. Okay. We have very high triglycerides, which is like cholesterol sister, and it's carbohydrate based as well. Okay. Also, and then uh, the trunk obesity, like a waist is a lot more than uh, anybody else out there. Okay, okay, okay. So what should these numbers be? LDL, HDL, triglycerides and cholesterol. Sure. What is the latest on it? Manjula, that's a great question. You know, I think we all get confused, but this uh, LDL, which is the bad cholesterol, it should be less than 100. Okay. And HDL, which is the good cholesterol, should be more than 45 and preferably more than 50. Okay. And amongst our Indian Americans or South Asian, I've seen it's in 30s, low 30s or even in 20s out there. The mm -hmm. triglyceride should be less than 150 and it runs from 200 to 1000 in some people. Oh no. And the struggle obesity, we have bigger waist <laughs> and unfortunately a lot of uh, abdominal obesity out there. Especially the abdominal obesity, there's a lot of fat in the abdomen which controls the pancreas, digestive system, adrenal glands, the liver mm -hmm. and all these things. The metabolism takes place, uh, the, especially the cholesterol metabolism mm -hmm. in the liver itself. So if the fatty liver, it messes up the whole metabolism. Okay, and why do we have high incidence of diabetes? And what should the numbers be there of uh, sugar, uh, blood sugar and, and the A1C? A1C. Well, that, that's again a great question. The diabetes is worldwide is getting worse and worse for some reason. And uh, amongst Indians, we've known that, you know, we are, uh, there's called insulin resistance. Okay. And we have very high in insulin resistance amongst okay. the Indians. We may have the insulin, the pancreas may be secreting, but it's mm -hmm. resistant, so it's not really uh, working out the way it should. Mm -hmm. and that's the reason it, it's high amongst okay. our people. Okay. And of course, our diet, the carbohydrate, high carbohydrate based, all mm -hmm. the time, the starches and everything else, that doesn't help either. Okay. So what should the numbers be? The number of the blood sugar should be less than 100. Okay. The fasting blood sugar. Okay. And the A1C, we used to do the glucose tolerance test, the A1C should be less than 5.7. Mm -hmm. And if it's 5.7 to se uh, 7, uh, that means it's borderline. If it's more than 7, then mm -hmm. definitely has to be treated with medications. And okay. So Ramesh, we'll take a short break here and carry right. on our conversation when we come back. Absolutely. If you are planning on retiring to a warmer location, then it's important that you visit Shanti Niketan. Shanti Niketan is the only Indian retirement resort community in the U.S. A private and gated community located in sunny and peaceful Orlando, Florida. The best place for Indians to retire. Call now for more information. Chai with Manjula presents NRI, A Closer Look. Welcome back. My guest is Dr. Ramesh Jafra, and the topic is our predisposition in the Indo-American community to some major health problems, such as heart disease and diabetes. Ramesh, you gave us some very alarming facts here that we are not only vulnerable to heart disease and diabetes, but also hypertension and vitamin D deficiency. So now tell us, how do we manage our risk factors? Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, I think more or less everybody knows that we have this problem and it's a lot more prevalent amongst Indian Americans or South Asian Americans. The key thing is how to really manage it. Right. Uh, there are a lot of studies. I'm going to make it very, very simple mm -hmm. in four different ways. Okay. One is diet. Second is exercise. Number three is stress reduction. And number four is supplements. Okay, so diet, exercise, stress reduction, stress reduction. and of course the supplements. Supplement. The okay, four. okay, sounds so good. So the diet is, is very clear. Unfortunately, our Indian uh, American diet is, is all carb based. You know, we eat a lot of chapatis, a lot of rice, mm -hmm. and even if some of the vegetables which we eat, we overcook it and just uh, get everything out of it. Beat the, the heck out of it. We do the same thing we do with the lentils uh -huh. and then they get overcooked mm -hmm. and everything we do out there gets overcooked and okay. so and it's basically all the starches and the carbohydrates are left out there which oh. we end up eating. Right. So and especially in some of the oils and ghees and butters which we use in this thing and they also yeah. actually create a lot more radicals, a lot more problems when we overcook. Okay, so while we are talking about oils, tell us which is the best oil to cook in? People say olive oil. Do you agree? Olive oil is good if you're not going to cook too high a temperature. If you're going to go up to 100, 110, that's, that's good enough. If you're going to go really overcooked, 
then the olive oil is going to so is, is not going to be good. Is anything. there any oil which is good for cooking then at Co high temperature? Coconut oil can take very high temperature. It can get up to 300, 300 oh, really? degrees. Oh, really? Okay, Absolutely. so coconut oil. Coconut oil is, is best if you want to go to that temperature. Okay. Olive oil is for just a little simmering and or if you want to use it otherwise for, I think it's perfect. Another big one is sugar. We know it's bad for diabetes. Sure. But uh, does it also contribute to heart disease? Absolutely. See, if the carbohydrates, we cannot burn them off, and then they get stored, and there's a Krebs cycle in the body which will convert all these carbohydrates into fat, mm -hmm. and they get stored. You, you cannot store the carbohydrates in the body. So there's, oh. a, there's a mechanism how it gets stored, and it turns into fat and gets stored. Okay, so sugar is bad for heart health also. It's bad only as much as you need it. If the athlete, somebody's running 20 miles, he's drinking and running it out, that's fine. But okay. if, you, if you're not going to exercise and keep having carbohydrates, you're going to turn fat. And um, what about red wine? Does it lower cholesterol? Actually? Red wine, as a matter of fact, you know, it used to be a lot of good studies, but now we know there's an uh, uh, antioxidant which we call resveratrol, which is way, way high in some of the wines, especially mm -hmm. Cabernet has more than Merlot and then more than Pinot, and of course the white wines have a lot less. Mm -hmm. Even some of the scotches and others have some, but uh -huh. not as much. Okay. as the, some of the red wines do. So that is a very, very potent anti antioxidant. Okay, and they say nuts are very good for us. Can we eat as much as we want or is there an issue there also? There's an issue. There's, there's special nuts like, uh, you know, almonds, walnuts, and some of the peanuts. Those are a lot better than some of the uh, cashew nuts and uh, mm -hmm. the, some of the other nuts. Okay, okay so they're, they're, they're much better. And of course, it should be in limited quantity, otherwise you uh, Cholesterol is going to go up if you eat a mm -hmm. lot more, and the calories going to be go go a lot more up. Okay, now tell me, an aspirin a day does yes. it keep the heart disease away? Absolutely, the aspirin is an antiplatelet, and as a matter of fact, amongst we are South Asians, they should start taking a lot early. Usually, we tell people and take it in their 40s and 50s, mm -hmm. but our Asian Americans, I usually tell them even in their 30s, because uh -huh. it'll thin the blood, it'll prevent strokes, it'll prevent heart attacks. Only problem somebody has bad stomach and can't tolerate it, then of course they cannot take it. Okay, okay, sounds good. So Ramesh, besides yeah. uh, nutrition, yeah. what else can help us beat the odds? Well, of course, the, you, you watch your diet, then exercise. You okay. know, make sure that we, we talked about uh, uh, abdominal obesity, mm -hmm. that if you can get rid of it, okay. it's, it's better. You can really change the genetics by exercising, by watching your diet, and you can modify some of these, even DNAs. Oh, that's it's, great. It's amazing, yeah. That's I mean, great we see know. some of the, the people, their parents over here are so short and their kids get a uh, lot taller. Right, so that right. means the genetics are different. So okay. now from this, uh, even J Japanese now, they're getting taller and taller, some of the Chinese and some of the affluent mm -hmm. communities because of the diet and exercise, the sports and everything else. So it is very important that, uh, and you know, the exercise should not be just the gymnasium, but one should do yoga and of course the meditation make, make it part of it okay. and all these things because the third thing is the stress, stress reduction as I talked about okay. because stress plays a lot of uh, play as well, you know, especially the Im immigrant communities, they have a lot more stress, they're over ambitious, they won't right. work hard, they, they really don't pay attention to anything else and uh -huh. uh, they're go-getters out there and type A mm -hmm. personalities. Okay. get obsessed with work sometime okay. and that brings a lot of stress. And so I think stress reduction is very important. They need okay. to have time to themselves, meditate, do yoga, travel, and things like that okay. so that that can relax them. All right. And any uh, vitamins or supplements that you recommend? Absolutely. See, I mean, there are a lot of antioxidants uh, available out there. We talked about the red wine, you know, that, that's great. But mm -hmm. the omega-3 itself is also very, very good. You know, most of people have very, very high triglycerides okay. and omega-3, the fish oil capsules. Now, those who don't eat fish or don't like the smell, there's a creole oil. Which oil? Creole. Creole. K-R-E-O-L-E. -E. Okay. It's like a, a vegetable-based omega-3, mm -hmm. very high, and they uh -huh. can just take that one tablet uh -huh. uh, of that one, and that'll give them enough omega-3. So the antioxidant, of course, we talked about aspirin. That's very important. Okay. And once we cannot bring down our cholesterol uh, levels mm -hmm. down with diet, exercise, stress reduction, then of mm -hmm. course you have to go on some medications which are statins, right. you know, which, which is very yeah. important that they should try to bring it. And some of the HDLs, if they're very, very low, we can't bring it, especially among Indians, there's some vitamins like niacin, mm -hmm. they should take the niacin to bring it up. 
Okay. And of course, diabetes control, hypertension control, those are very, very important. Is there any specific screening or test that we Indians should go for? Of course, you know, I go to the doctor, I have a physical examination, we can pick up their BMI, make sure that they're not yes. over fat, you know, the, 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 the body mass is not over the normal ones. And uh, then the waist, like I said, you know, we gotta yeah. check that out, you listen to their heart, the lungs, and then do the blood test, regular blood test for the fasting blood sugar, the lipid profile, okay. and the lipid profile we can do pretty elaborate these days. Yeah, no, uh, what I heard was that some of our symptoms are not caught by conventional screening. So are yeah. there any specific tests that you recommend for the Indian community? Well, if they have a high, very f high family history, they're smokers, they have diabetes, hypertension, or even without any symptoms, we usually do it treadmill test or a stress test or stress echo. Okay. And if that is abnormal or borderline or inconclusive, indeterminate, then we can do it. We would call thallium scan, which is like a nuclear scan with myocardial perfusion imaging studies okay. where we can really catch it. All right. And the, of course, the angiogram is the last test, but we don't like to do it unless somebody mm -hmm. really shows that it's markedly positive. Okay. And any particular resources or websites that you recommend for more information? Well, there's a plenty. I think the South Asian Heart Center, as you know, that's uh, you know uh, very right. uh, much you know available to everybody out there in the Al Camino Hospital, right. the Palo Alto Foundation, yeah. Kaiser Hospital have their own. Of course, some of our uh, individual physicians. We have set up our own programs. I mm -hmm. set one even in the temple to, oh. to have this program. Okay. So we do uh, every uh, festival of India. We do a free health fair on Saturday mornings. We oh. have about 50, 60 doctors. We do free, free screening really? out there. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So they can come over there, and this year it's on the 16th of uh, August on okay. Saturday morning. All right, great. Our time is almost up, so before we go, real quick, give us a list of a few do's and don'ts. Well, uh, the three do's, of course, uh, watch your diet. What to eat, when to eat, and uh, how often to eat. Okay. That's important. And then, of course, the exercise is very, very important. Do it on a regular basis, three to four times a day, uh, week, okay. and that's very important. Mm -hmm. Stress reduction, do some yoga, meditation, travel, make sure that you do the stress reduction out there. And the don'ts is the don't give up. You know, I know a lot of people out there, they give up, they think, oh, my parents had it, I'm uh -huh. too fat, I have my cholesterol is too high, and I already got diabetes. But don't give up. If you keep trying and trying, believe me, you're always reducing the risk. So never give up. There's hope. That's right. <laughs> okay. And then, of course, don't smoke. You know, that's one thing. Stay away from even smokers. Okay. And the third uh, don't is don't take anything to heart. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't bother what anybody's saying. If you want to be type B okay. personality, uh, don't uh -huh. be obsessed about anything. Be happy. I think you're going to okay. do a lot better. That's a good one. <laughs> Thank you, Ramesh, Thank so you. much for your time Absolutely. and advice. I appreciate sure. it. Dr. Jafra gave us some good news and bad news. The bad news is, yes, we have a much higher risk of developing serious health conditions such as heart disease and diabetes. But the good news is that it is possible to manage the risks. These problems are preventable and treatable. There are quite a few resources available. You may look them up online under South Asian Health. In fact, we featured the South Asian Heart Center in the Bay Area on our show a few years ago. We also did a show with the 100K Cheeks organization about the serious shortage of bone marrow donors in our community. You may catch these shows on YouTube or our website, chaiwithmanjula.org. Welcome to Technology Benefiting Humanity. We are at the Tech Museum of Innovation in San Jose, California, learning about another very exciting program called Makerspace at the Tech. Joining me now is Jose Cenaris, one of the Maker Core members here at the Tech. Jose, it's great to have you here. Great to be here. Well, last time Lauren gave us uh, a good idea of what Makerspace program is, but for our viewers today, we would like you to give a quick review of the program. Right. So, Makerspace at the Tech Museum, we Maker Core members, we facilitate arts and crafts uh, tech-based um, programs. Mm -hmm. So, our first program that we had was called Lemur Leap. Mm -hmm. And for that program, we had folks um, use air power to transport lemurs from tree to tree uh, that were attached by a zip line. 
Okay. So folks were able to explore different um, vehicle designs and different and basic fundamental um, physics or mechanics to get um, their lemurs across. Can we see the prototype somewhere? Well, that's an excellent question. Um, so as the MicroCore members, we uh, keep we update our regular blog. So if they want, if uh, um, museum guests wanted to see, or if anybody wanted to see our lemur leap program, uh -huh. we do have a blog post uh, on the tech.org, so they can. People can find it there. Okay. Now, it's a nationwide program, Lauren told us last time. Yeah. So, uh, what is the mission behind it? What, was, what, is, what are its goals? So, the mission uh, behind the uh, Make Your Education Initiative, um, where us Maker Corps members serve, uh, their motto is to uh, every child is a maker. Uh -huh. And here at the Tech Museum, our vision, our mission statement is uh, to inspire the innovator in everyone. Right. So the Maker Education Initiative, our partnership with them, enables us to become that resource of innovation for our nearby community. So mm -hmm. anybody coming into the museum, mm -hmm. they're able to become makers, they're able to have an idea and try out that idea, and if it doesn't work, that's great because now they're going to know that that idea didn't work out and they can try a different one. So mm -hmm. our partnership with the Maker Education Initiative and in the Tech Museum, it really enables this community that we're a part of to become whatever they want to be. Okay, sounds great. You are a Maker Corps member and you are uh, responsible for developing and running the program. So tell us, uh, how does it go? How does it work? What is involved? Uh, um, so part of the process to developing these programs, uh, well, the big idea is play. Um, mm -hmm. We have an idea and we, we try to create that idea. And we have, here at the Tech Museum, we have all sorts of resources to make those happen so we play with the scratch program I see. which is made out of the MIT media lab uh -huh. and so scratch is a like an open source program where folks can create um, games or well just about anything okay. uh, so we utilize scratch programs so one of our programs uh, called stars stripes and switches which is featured on our blog uh -huh. on the website um, uh, we were able to use that to launch virtual fireworks. Okay. So that's one of the resources that we use, one of the tools we use. Mm -hmm. Another tool that we use is the Makey Makey. Uh, so the Makey Makey is, it looks like a video game controller mm -hmm. and they, each of the buttons or switches on there, uh, it mimics a keyboard switch on, the, on your mm -hmm. uh, computer's laptop. And you're able to program those uh, switches to become like a touchpad so we can and anything that's a conductive can become a touchpad. So if mm -hmm. we were to attach a banana to the Makey Makey, that okay. banana can become, let's just say, the space bar. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. And then uh, what's <laughs> even more explosive, now uh -huh. that we have our Makey Makey, we can buy that with a scratch. When okay. we touch that banana or we touch the touchpad, connected to the Makey Makey, which is connected to the scratch program, uh -huh. then things happen on a projector. So there's, um, it's an explosive environment. I it's know. an explosive process when we're trying to figure out what can we do and how can we make it uh, better. So it's, so we definitely, us as the Maker Core members, we're definitely diving into the uh, do first and then reiterate and try to make it a very accessible program. Okay, so it sounds very interesting. Uh, do you have any special message for our viewers before we go? I definitely want to point folks in the direction of visiting the tech website. Um, our blog keeps track, uh, everything's up to date in terms of what we have available, what we've done, and how it's accessible to everyone at home. Uh, they can bring these programs definitely home and try to continue it there. Uh, well, just, also, last thing to add is uh, join us for Last Hurrah in, uh, in the first week of August as we wrap up our summer of making. Okay, Jose, thank you so much for your time. It was nice talking to you. Thank you for having me. It's time now for our special segment, Reflections with Jesse. Today, Jesse Kaur has some stellar advice for high school grads as they leave home for college. Welcome to Reflections with Jesse. Our segment today is for the high school class of 2014. We're fast approaching that time when the high school grads across the country will be headed to college. Every uncle, aunt, and stranger is wishing them success and offering advice that they don't particularly want. At any rate, success means different things to different people. The millennials are a whole different breed. Most of us have been very indulgent parents and our kids have led an easy, sheltered life. They may not be as inclined to sweat, tears and blood to be successful as their immigrant parents. However, success does demand grit and dedication, no matter what one is pursuing. There is no moron-proof formula that we can hand over to our youth as a manual for success. By and large, they will figure things out for themselves. Let's consider a few traits that are as necessary for success today as they were 
for the first generation immigrants. One of the most important things in life is to know what you want and where you are going. That may be a tough call for an 18 year old. If you can identify your passion and align it with your goals, you enhance your chances of being successful. If you don't know where you want to go, how will you get there? Many South Asian immigrants who have struggled to eke out a living push their children to become doctors, lawyers, or engineers. These professions guarantee a certain level of income. And making a decent living via a decent income is certainly an important part of being successful. It is wonderful if the children have a natural tendency towards those disciplines. But what if they are leaning towards becoming artists, musicians, actors, photographers, dancers, singers, or even writers? We tell them that it is good to have those interests, but as a hobby. Don't pursue those foolish ventures as a career. Many artistic talents that could have blossomed are killed at the altar of practical wisdom. I've seen many young people pursue computer science, law or medicine on their parents' behest and then abandon it after a few years to follow something totally different that they feel passionately about. The best advice we can give our youth is whatever you choose to pursue, get after it and keep at it. Work hard, remain persistent in the face of disappointments and setbacks. Don't be lulled into the beaten track. Have the guts to be different. Innovators, creators, inventors were not happy with status quo. Whatever situation you find yourself in, communicate with those around you, not merely via emails, text or Snapchat, and certainly not in the monosyllabic yo, but in real dialogue. Listen with an open mind. As a human resources professional, I've consistently seen that those who lead the pack are enthusiastic and communicative individuals. They don't pretend to know everything, neither do they rest on their laurels. They are continually willing to learn and grow. It is equally important to take responsibility when you mess up. Mistakes do happen. Don't cover them, own them and learn from them value people and diverse opinions. Be a team player. No one likes prima donnas, no matter how smart they are. Respect your peers. Jim Durante, the comedian once said, be kind to people on the way up. You will meet them again on your way down. Nothing is constant in life. People have long memories and it's a small world. When you leave home, keep in touch with your family on a regular basis. They will miss you and are concerned about your well-being. Don't call only when you need money. We wish you success and good fortune as you venture out into the new world. Charity Kala, high spirits always. Our thanks to Jesse Call. Thank you very much for joining us. For Child with Manjula, I'm Manjula Gupta. I look forward to seeing you again after two weeks. Watch this show again at childwithmanjula.org or on YouTube.